In this uh, lecture video, I will explain the reflection and refraction of light waves using Huygens principle. Okay, I will make use of this simulation. So, the mathematical derivation will be done in the <coughs> next video. So, as you can see here, this uh, yellow color medium is the medium having refractive index of 1 and the blue color medium is the second medium which has a refractive index of 2. So, blue color medium is denser, optically denser than the yellow color medium. So, now light is going to be incident from rarer to denser medium in this case and the angle of incidence is going to be 45 degrees. So, this line here you see is the leading edge of the light wave which is going to come, the plane, plane wave. So, this is called the leading edge of the wave is called as the wave front and the rays of light will be the uh, lines which are drawn perpendicular to the wave front. So, they would be coming like this. So, let me show you. So, as you can see here, the plane wave front, I have just shown a single wave front, it is coming and it is going to be incident at an angle of 45 degrees. You can imagine the line which is perpendicular to this wave front and the normal would be like this, vertical. So, the ray of light would make a 45 degree angle with the vertical. Okay, next step. Now here these dots represent, they are just randomly placed points. See, here I have just, they are here they are equally spaced. So, the gap between these dots can be anything. It can be 0, it can be anything. 0 to any value. So, according to Huygens principle, if this is the wave front, okay, at every point on this wave front, the leading edge of this wave, if you put, if you take every point, from each point, a, a circular wave is being generated, which travels in all directions with same, a spherical wave front would travel in all directions in three dimensional space. On this uh, flat surface, if you see, a circular wave would travel outwards from each point at the same speed. The speed which is associated with that particular medium. So, now in this case, once this wave front hits the interface between these two medium, from the moment when it hits each point in this interface, that point would generate a secondary wave which travels with the speed associated with this yellow medium, if it is a reflected wave. And from the same point, a secondary wave would be generated which would travel outwards okay, in this blue medium with the speed associated with that blue medium. So, now since uh, speed is dependent on the refractive index and greater the refractive index of the medium, slower the speed of light in that medium. So, in medium 2 the light will travel at a slower speed and in the yellow medium which is medium 1 the light would travel with a higher speed. So, now let us see. So, this wave front is traveling with speed V1 in medium 1 and here it hit the point from where we will show the secondary waves being generated. So, in medium 1 the speed is higher, greater. So, as you can see the secondary wave front has already started traveling. And in medium 2 the speed is uh, slower. So, the secondary wave has traveled a less distance. See, from this point it travels equally in all directions. That is why it generates circular wave front. From this point also it travels equally in all directions, that is why it is again a circular wave front. Since the speed is greater in medium 1, the circular wave front generated from this point has traveled a greater distance or a bigger radius, covered a bigger radius in medium 1 than in medium 2. So now the original wave front, plane wave front, now it is going to hit the second point. So from here again the circular wave fronts will be generated. In the meanwhile, the circular wave front generated from the previous point will keep traveling at the same speed, at speed V1 in medium 1 and speed V2 in medium 2. It will keep expanding. The radius will keep getting bigger and bigger at the same rate. So, as you can see, as this plane wave hits each and every point, it keeps generating secondary wave fronts, secondary wavelets and the new wave front of this. So, this if you draw a tangent to the leading edge of all these secondary waves, that would give the new wave front. So, the tangent would be like this as shown by this pointer. So, in, so you can see 
this was the incident wavefront and this is the reflected wavefront and this would be the refracted wavefront so automatically you can see that the incident wavefront has turned towards the normal the normal would be vertically down this was the incident wavefront it has turned in this direction so that now it is traveling in this direction instead of earlier it was going like this now it's going like this it has turned towards the normal because it's slowing down in the denser medium so do you realize now why if the wave slows down it travels it bends towards the normal it's because the leading edge of the secondary wavelengths would uh, <coughs> turn towards the normal because they have traveled lesser distance similar to that example of a toy car which has a fixed speed when it enters a rough surface the wheel which crosses the interface first and enters the rough surface will slow down and the other wheel would continue at a f higher speed so the toy car would automatically rotate towards the normal same same way here also so as you can see a uh, reflected wavefront and a refracted wavefront now let's see here in this uh, step we have shown the wavefront so the tangent has been drawn along the leading edge of the reflected waves and the refracted waves so now you now the ray of light also has been drawn the ray is always drawn perpendicular to the wavefront so this is the angle of incidence 45 degrees this black angle and the reflected wave is this so this this black ray and this blue ray they are the reflected rays and the refracted wavefront this red line this red ray represents the refracted ray it's perpendicular to this red wavefront so as you can see this uh, the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and angle of refraction is lesser than the angle of incidence now the light wave consists of a series of waves so <coughs> when you consider a plane wave being incident on the interface the gap between the successive waves is called as the wavelength so as you can see the gap between the successive incident waves and reflected waves is equal so when light is reflected from the surface when light is reflected from the surface the wavelength does not change but when you look at the refracted rays as you can see the gap between the successive waves is lesser than the gap between the successive waves in incident or reflected waves so when light slows down its speed when the speed of light decreases its wavelength also decreases when it enters an optically denser medium and since v is equal to f lambda where f is frequency and frequency does not change once the light has been emitted so if the speed is going to decrease so you get v is equal to f lambda so once you get v equals f lambda since frequency of light cannot change when once it has been emitted so it has to be constant so you get f is equal to v by lambda and so if speed decreases then since this fraction has to remain a constant the wavelength also has to decrease so that the numerical value of this fraction remains unchanged that's why whenever the speed of light decreases when it enters a new medium its wavelength also decreases clear but the frequency of light remains unchanged and color is a property of the frequency of light not wavelength of light that's why when light suppose blue light travels from air to water okay though the wavelength changes the color of the light will not change because color is a property of frequency and frequency does not change or when light enters glass slab from air you don't find that even though wavelength is decreasing you would expect if color was a property of wavelength you would expect that uh, when wavelength decreased the color should also change for example uh, in air all the light waves of different colors have same speed okay and 
since the speed is constant but the, so and uh, color is a property of frequency so different colors have different frequencies so at the time of emission itself they are emitted at different colors and different frequencies and since they are traveling with same speed in that case speed is a constant so if frequency is more then the wavelength has to be less so that the speed will be same for all the waves traveling through vacuum but once the <coughs> waves have been emitted at a fixed frequency if you take any one frequency of light then for that particular frequency when it travels from medium to medium speed will change and accordingly the wavelength also has to change okay so in this case the wavelength has changed because the speed changed but the frequency is same 